We spent 6,000 of our own dollars on seven TVs to find the best one under $1,000, and we put each one to an identical test to get a direct one-to-one -one comparison. Keep watching this video till the very end. You'll learn how you and one other person, two people are gonna win our top two TVs. And we're gonna link to all of these TVs in the description section below. Let's get started. Amazon Fire TV Omni Series, probably the one of the lightest TVs we looked at. Definitely 22 pounds shipped. So if that's consideration, it's light. Yep, the legs are, you know, pretty cheap plastic and the TV itself is, it's not super thin, not super thick. It's, you know, pretty average. It's very average. It's a very average looking TV. In terms of the menus and the setup experience, it's terrible. It was for me anyway. It was very laggy. When I took it out of the box, I had to do a firmware update, which took about 20 minutes. And then for the first day or so that I used it, I think what was going on is it was downloading content in the background. It just kept crashing. So I would try to switch an input and it would be laggy and then it would crash and I would have to unplug the TV and plug it back in. So if you do have a Fire TV and you're watching this now, it does get better, but it doesn't get great. A lot of these user interfaces and the menus, they have a really polished look. And this one was just a little bit grainy for me and that caught my eye almost immediately. If you have an Amazon Fire TV, you're gonna be familiar with the interface, but I really think they could have done a much better job of optimizing it for this TV. There are also a lot of pre-installed apps, and I think when you get a TV for the first time, you turn it on, it can be a little bit overwhelming when there's just so many things going on and it's a new TV for you. The remote itself, pretty lightweight, pretty easy to use. I think it's pretty user-friendly, really. It really is a pretty decent remote, but it does feel kind of cheap to me, and it also doesn't light up. So if you yep. need a light-up remote, well, there's only one TV that had a light-up yeah, remote. Yeah, that's kind of a trend we noticed, is that you know back in the old days, the buttons were glow-in-the-dark, so if it was dark, it would, they would just light up, and now that's just not the case. If it's, if it's a dark room, you're kind of in trouble. Can't take that for granted, and that's why I like the remotes with fewer buttons, and this one actually is pretty good in yep. terms of that. When it came to the Dolby test, the blacks just weren't really that black, and I didn't think the colors were all that vibrant. <laughs> no, it looked pale. The blacks, it's not that they're not just black, they're blue. So it's kind of a dark blue that you get instead of a black. It really does not look good at all. I was surprised when I started to watch this TV because I associate the Amazon brand with really good quality stuff. Mm -hmm. This is an exception to that rule. Dark movie scenes I thought looked pretty bad because the black is more of a blue. It's not, it's just not black. The red scene that we looked at and the more vibrant color scenes I thought looked okay, but they had a greenish tint. Mm -hmm. So it really was not that great of a movie watching experience. Everything else was just kind of flat. And when you start to look at these same scenes over and over again on different TVs, the, the small differences really stand out. And for me, this TV was just, it was not good. The HDR black and white test, not as jittery as some of the TVs, but it wasn't really smooth. The blacks are blue. Yeah, the whites were okay. Yeah, the corners were rough too. You can kind of see up in the corners where it was supposed to be really black or really white, and it was just there was a little bit of fogginess there. And consistency across the panel, yes. The High Sense U8G. This TV has some really unique legs, and at first it's kind of weird to see the triangle legs. They, they grew on me. I'll admit it. Over time, I was like, oh, I like that. Instead of like the, the plain legs. It's, yeah, it's I don't cool. like sometimes they have the plain legs that just stick straight out and then they stop. Mm -hmm. I stepped on one earlier and it wasn't too comfortable. But then again, most people don't put their TVs on the floor. TV was about average thickness. One thing I did notice is that the bottom bezel was just bigger than the ones on the side and on the top, which is, I don't really like that design. I wish it was just consistent all the way around, but that's just a stylistic I, thing. I prefer that too. The remote, pretty lightweight, easy, you know, fits well in your hand. The buttons though, they, they light up, but not really enough. They don't light up enough to be functional at all. Yeah, but I do like the weight of it. I mean, it's a nice light remote. Yep. Got a what big, I didn't uh, like about this one is that the bottom buttons, which is like the YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, there's six of them, they're big, they're ugly, and mm -hmm. it's kind of annoying to me to have buttons on a remote to services that I don't subscribe to. Sure, I don't even know what Tubi is. Yeah, exactly. I guess you're a newbie to Tubi. Yeah, apparently. In terms of the menus, remember, there was an annoying system sound oh, God. that we figured out how to turn off, but it was awful. It was like, it was how bad can we make this yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like a nice soft tone, but this, it was like an aggressive, like, yeah. like you're pounding a Cut. hammer. In terms of the black and white Dolby test, the blacks were very black, mm -hmm. the whites were very white, but once you start to introduce these other colors, the right. blacks turn to blues. Exactly. In terms of color itself, I thought the bright colors were vibrant, they were nice, but those middle tones fell totally flat for exactly, me. Exactly, yeah. In terms of sound, for TVs in this category, they're not great compared to a sound bar. In terms of bass, not a lot, no high-end at all. This one was especially bad. And we had some issues when we plugged in the Apple TV, the sound that was coming out of that one was much quieter than the on-device YouTube app. So 
it was very strange and it wasn't even close. We got blasted out by YouTube at 30. In terms of the Dolby movie test, I think this one kind of failed the hardest. The reds were not red and to me it looked like they put like a dirt filter over the film. It just, it looked really bad. It really did. And gradients were extremely staggered. It was like we were watching things that were supposed to look smooth and there'd just be these lines instead of smooth color transitions. Not sure if it's the processor on this TV that makes it so bad. Jittery. Jitter problems, it was not good. Very bad. In terms of the HDR test, I thought the blacks were pretty consistent. Yeah. The whites weren't at all. Right, the panel, not so great. Big problems with the white test. The LG Nano 90, maybe one of the most stylish TVs we looked at. Super thin, it'd be great for wall mounting. Yeah. Legs thin, everything was sleek and stylish. Yeah, as soon as we took this one out of the box, or at least started to, this TV had about 9,000 warnings that we had to be careful with it because it had a bezel-less display. Yeah. When we turned it on, I was kind of surprised because there was a bezel. Yeah, a little it bit. It was not bezel-less. It's expensive. It was the most expensive TV we bought for this for video. So. Yeah. And the stand, pretty sturdy. Maybe one of them, maybe the sturdiest of them all. Who's TV, the, TV on the wall. Who's the sturdiest of them all? Yeah. In terms of setup, we got to web OS and everything was good. And then it got a little bit ridiculous because the remote turned into a Nintendo Wii. Yeah, it's like a Nintendo Wii controller. It's like magic remote. You can turn it off, but the issue is that if you press that center button, it turns on again, and you kind of need that center button. You need to press it all the time. <laughs> it was super sensitive, right? It was, yeah. Unless you're familiar with a Nintendo Wii, which we both happen to be, but... If you're not, it's gonna be confusing and it's totally unnecessary. Well, even if you are familiar with a Nintendo Wii, out of the box, this was like not calibrated well at all. So I was like pointing it to the side yeah. just to get it in the center. It was it was bad. Also, I don't really like this remote, the oh, look of it. I don't like it either. The only thing that lights up is the power button yep. and it lights up every single time you press any button. On the well, it's interesting remote. too, cause the power button is like not really a power button. It's like two buttons. Like it's reminded me of like a hotel remote. Right. Like you, you know, cheap TV, hotel right. remote. What I really didn't like about this is the way it felt in my hand, mm -hmm. especially the back part, which is super shiny. Yep. And if you have sweaty hands at all, it starts to feel disgusting to me. Definitely the nastiest remote. Yeah, in terms of the menu, there's a lot going on. And oh again, kind of overwhelming, mm -hmm. but it was zippy. I thought that there were way too many options in the menu right off the bat. I mean, this thing was like jam packed full of things that you could watch. But my issue was that the text was small and that there were ellipses after almost every single title, mm. which you would then have to select and then it would wait until it scrolls through the title because they made everything so tiny on the TV itself out of the box. You can't see what the things are. When it comes to the color, I think that David and I had different impressions right off the bat because the first thing that stood out to me was that the blooming on this TV or like the excess white, let's mm. say around other bright colors was more noticeable to me than it was on other TVs. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely noticeable. It wasn't too distracting. I didn't, you know, it was... It... I think it's something I would get used to, to be sure. fair. Yeah. Because what would happen, especially at the end of the Dolby test, what I noticed was that the Dolby logo disappeared mm -hmm. and then it slowly faded the colors out. So it's kind of like the blooming is regulated smoothly by the processor mm -hmm. of the TV. I think they did a pretty good job of handling it and the fact that I could even notice that means that the blacks on this TV were pretty excellent. Yeah. And another thing that we noticed was that the viewing angle on this TV was pretty solid. Mm -hmm. yep. And on some of the TVs, when I looked at David's side, and I'm only four feet off center from, let's say, the, the other side of the TV, it was super inconsistent. Yep. On this one, I felt like it had a pretty solid, consistent panel. I thought that once the colors got saturated, like it did in the Golden Gate Bridge, I felt like you started to lose a little bit of clarity. It felt like the saturation was a little high for me. Yeah, I mean, these were just really vibrant colors and there's one scene where there's some lava flowing and I thought that, that that's the best lava of them all. If sound matters to you, and it should, this TV during the movie had the best sound by far. Maybe not by far, far, but there were two TVs that to me stood out in terms of having the best sound. Mm. Yeah, this is the winner for me. And if sound is super, super important to you, maybe you just invest in a sound bar or a surround sound system. And, and uh, yeah, I have a good one. Yeah. I'll link to it in the description section below. Perfect. In terms of the black and white test for HDR, I thought it looked pretty good. There's a little bit of fuzziness for me. Just a little bit. But in terms of smoothness and distortion, I felt like this was probably the best. I saw just a tiny little blip of something that may or may not have been real 
tiniest little blip, but a lot of these other TVs were jittery yep. and there'd be all these pixelated things that would happen as soon as it would start to have smooth motion. Yep. For that reason, I think that gamers would like this TV. Absolutely. Yeah. It also supports HDMI 2.1, so gamers would, next gen Gamer, gamers Gamers need that. The Samsung QLED Q70A. Very stylish, very sturdy, very thin bezels. Really like the look of this TV. Yeah, very, very thin. If you're gonna mount it on a wall, I would definitely consider this one for like getting it really flush up against yeah. that wall. This was the only TV that had a thin base. Mm -hmm. So the feet were in the center and probably about a foot apart. Yep, yeah, and then there was like a little plate, mostly stylistic, because the legs themselves a look kind of janky. Yeah. But stick the plate on, it looks, it looks you super stylish. You snap it on there in the middle. So if you have a thin table, definitely consider that. However, the base was actually pretty deep. So yep. although the TV is like this, the base is like this. Yep. So if you're gonna try to get it up against a wall and you have a table, it's not gonna go yeah, right I mean, up against the wall. This, this is really one that I'd, I'd want a wall mount. It's right. Just, it's really good for that. Right, exactly. The remote itself, one of my favorites. I really like this, the solar power. I don't know how functional that would be. Oh, it's awesome. But, the uh, only one with no batteries that you have yep. to charge. Plug it in to you a nice... You can plug it into USB-C. Yep. I thought this was the best remote. Yeah, it is my. I think it is my favorite remote too. Also very thin. If I had one complaint, maybe the power button, these Netflix Prime and Samsung TV Plus buttons are a little small, but not really, I suppose. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good. They're, yeah, they're okay. But what I do like about this one is that the remote doesn't feel like a giant ad for these services. For sure. Because yep. they're small, it's the same color. It's not like these other remotes where it's just Netflix. Logo, brand colors, the whole deal. Yeah. Disney Plus. I wonder how much these companies are paying to get featured on remote controls, like Tubi. Hmm. How much did they pay to get featured on remote I don't know, control? the price must be pretty low if Tubi can afford that one, but none of the other ones. Yeah, so. maybe we can get our own button on there. Sure. We'll pay it for a YouTube button. That'd be cool. The menu is a bit slow and clunky at first. It gets better over time. One thing that I think was kind of frustrating for me, if you're not familiar with the Samsung TV, to get to the sources, you need to like press the left button for the sources option to appear. Sources if, like HDMI, HDMI 1, 2, yeah. 3, 4, etc. So if you have never used a Samsung TV before, fortunately I was kind of familiar with the interface, and I was just like, oh, it's over here. But if you're not familiar with that, you might just not be able to find it. Yeah, I'm surprised by how clunky the interface is. There's just a little bit of lag. On these Samsung TVs, I always feel like the processor's reach exceeds its grasp, but only slightly. Blacks were decent, but they weren't, you know, black, black. They weren't the zero, zero, zero black. Yeah, I was surprised about that. And I also felt like the gradients were just a little bit messy, not as bad as some of the other TVs, but you could definitely tell there was, you could see them. With this TV, it was interesting to me because David started complaining about the gradients right away. And I was like, what's he crazy? Mm -hmm. But then I looked on the other side of this TV and then I saw that there were gradients over there. Yeah. So we figured out that the gradients on this TV, the problem is the viewing angle. Sure. And you don't have to be that far off. Like right, well, I mean, we were like, you know, the camera is the center. This is where we yeah. were sitting, essentially. Yeah. Yep. In terms of the color, though, I thought it was vibrant, pretty clear, handled motion really well. Really? You thought the motion was good? I, I thought, thought it was that it was a little jittery. Maybe, maybe. There was some jittery stuff. Maybe by that point, I was a little turned off by yeah. this TV. In terms of the Dolby Audio test, it, kind of, it felt kind of flat for me. And again, I go back to that lightning where it's supposed to be this big crack and right. it's a bang. And I thought this did a good job when it came to the atmospheric effects. Like, this was one where it felt like it had some sort of a virtual surround effect, mm. but it had no base. So it wasn't a problem with the software decoding. It was a problem with the actual speakers in the TV. Like David said, sounded flat. Lightning, thunder, you know, not in this TV. In terms of the Dolby movie test, the reds were, were pretty red, but they were also a little bit washed out. So it wasn't, it wasn't great. Right, some of the movies where we looked at the red colors, the bright reds, it looked orange to me. Mm -hmm. In this one, it did look red. But the blacks, similar problem, where if it's pure black, looks okay. Yep. But as soon as you introduce a tiny, tiny bit of color into it, all of a sudden it turns blue. Yeah. The one scene that we looked at where the blacks are more in play, it was just, it was really it's bad. Awful. This TV was the biggest loser of the HDR black and white test. There was a point where our circle was coming across the screen and the, I think the processor just failed. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Very, very pixelated. So if you're a video gamer, what do you think, David? Uh, exactly, uh. exactly. I thought that the white panel on this one was actually okay, mm. but all the other problems overshadowed yeah. the okayness of well, the white. Well, the whites and blacks were fine. And just, uh, yeah, as soon as you get some motion as on as the screen. You get some motion or some other colors introduced yeah. into the picture. So right. if you're watching maybe, you know, old black and white slideshows. Right, the move very, slideshows, right, yeah. exactly, they move slowly. This is, this is not good. 
No. The Sony X85J, very thin, very stylish, very sturdy, just overall looks great. Yeah, great solid TV when we picked it up. I like the little Sony thing in the bottom. Mm. It's not over the top in your face like some of the other models were. Yeah. Thin bezels, one that'd be really excellent, again, for mounting to a wall, yeah. if you feel so inclined. We said the TV was stylish, can't really say the same for the remote. It's, it's very tall, it's very thin, and a lot of the buttons are just really small. Yeah, so the wheel itself, I need a little bit of click on the wheel. There's the, yeah. It's, this is a mushy, awful feeling wheel yeah. that is very small and doesn't extend to the edge of the remote. It's yeah. all sort of like tiny in the middle there. What are you doing, Sony? Right. This is Sony being Sony, putting lots of buttons on a remote that doesn't need them unless you have a Blu-ray player, you've got other stuff going on. I definitely would not consider this to be a very easy to use remote. Yeah, I had some difficulty too with the directional buttons because they're so small that you kind of almost press the, the mushy center button at the same time and it's just- uh, It feels bad. It's hard to, to hold this. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a two-hand job, really. This is not a good. throwback to the terrible old remote days. This is just, it's not a good remote. We don't like this remote. Probably my favorite menu user interface. It was smooth, it was intuitive, just really easy to use. But I'm also a Sony person. I've got a PlayStation, so. I like Sony setup processes because they take the time to put in some like pretty video mm. and have that sound and bravia yeah. and it looks really good. I also liked that it had us put the Apple TV in the right port. Mm -hmm. It was like, are you sure you don't want to put it in the HFR port? It doesn't say that HFR stands for high frame rate, mm -hmm. but I liked that. And then my favorite thing about this was that it calibrated the audio using the microphone built yeah. into the remote. I thought that it was, was really It was cool. cool. I don't know how functional that's going to be no, or how effective it'll be, but I, it's cool. Yeah, it was a cool idea. I thought it was pretty user-friendly, especially if you're an Android user. Mm -hmm. It's a Google TV interface, so it has you sign in with your Gmail account. The other thing I didn't like, though, was the volume slider appears on the TV in the very bottom left-hand corner. So if you're trying to change the volume and you're in the kitchen and you can't see the very bottom left-hand corner of the TV, you're not going to know what the volume is. Probably not a concern for most people, but just something to be aware of. In terms of the sound, it just it kind of fell flat for me, especially because we heard the Bravia thing. It was like, Whoom, it was yeah. really cool. And then the Dolby test was just... Yeah, yeah. no bass, but a lot of high-pitched audio. I, I think this one did a better job with like that really high-pitched stuff. Mm. I was not very impressed with the sound on this one. Yeah, I don't know what we calibrated it for. In terms of the Dolby whites and blacks, I just I didn't think the blacks were all that great, really. No, the blacks weren't good. I thought that the whites were passable. Gradients. Gradients were super choppy. Yeah. So really not the best picture processing maybe on this TV. We should also mention that this is an LCD TV. Yep. So the Amazon TV was, this one is too. Sony has OLED technology built into their more expensive TVs, which looks amazing. Yep. But this would have been a really good TV back in the day. I'm not gonna foreshadow what I thought of this TV though. While the blacks and whites weren't necessarily great, the colors were, were pretty good and vibrant. Yeah, they were very vibrant. It was pretty smooth when it came to the lava flow. Yep. Pretty good processing in terms of the colors, but not the gradients. It was kind of weird. Yeah. Nice vibrant colors, but you get the gradients and it was choppy. Let me get to the movie. And again, the blacks just weren't black. Not black at all. You could see detail in the black colors on this TV, unlike other TVs but the blacks aren't black, they're blue. Mm -hmm. So that's not good. And the red on this TV though, and the brighter colors again, actually looked pretty red. Yeah. It's pretty good to me. Colors were good. Good colors. Blacks were not good. Exactly. HDR, black and white test. Again, the blacks just weren't black. And I also noticed a little bit of fuzziness in the corners of the TV. Right, I thought actually that the white panel, the white was actually very consistent across except for the fuzziness. Mm. So, I mean, this is the LCD technology that Sony has been building into their TVs. I bought a TV that was a Sony TV in 2008 that was an LCD. Mm. They've really worked out the LCD technology, yeah. but we've moved on Sony. Other, uh, Samsung even, QLED technology with localized dimming. None of that on this TV. Don't even get me started. A Little bit of blooming, not too bad. Well, if you want a Sony TV that has the newer technology, you just gotta pay more than $1,000 for it. Exactly. Maybe we'll make that video next. The TCL 6 Series QLED Smart TV. This one was interesting because it was thin on top and then when you got to the base, it got pretty thick. So I don't know how you'd be able to mount that to a wall, but yeah. Uh, there, it's not gonna be super flush. This TV was a little bulky. Yeah. It was very bulky, especially compared to the Samsung. Yeah, it's so. two plastic legs. I was a little bit concerned about the wobbliness. It'll be, it'll be probably be fine, but it's just a little, yeah. little concerned there. Yeah, more knock over a bolt. I did think it was a nice sleek TV overall. Yeah. Just, so, just a big bezel at the bottom. Yeah. What we noticed right off the bat was that this white light on the bottom of the TV was just blinking mm -hmm. all the time, which would be super annoying. And the yep. reason it was, 
was that we hadn't connected to the internet. If you don't plan to connect your TV to the internet, don't buy this TV. That would drive, would drive me nuts. Absolutely crazy. This is a Roku TV. If you have a Roku at home, you're going to be right at home with this one. And this is a Roku remote. Yep. I like this remote. Nice and small, light. I kind of like the uh, the volume buttons on the side. It's like a phone. I've never seen that before on a TV remote, but yep. uh, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool, except you couldn't figure out how to I change couldn't, the well, I, I figured it out, I thought, oh, that's cool. And then I was like, where's the volume button? Yeah. And then, oh, wait, it's on the well, side. Well, you were looking right. in the menus for the yeah. TV. Anyway, I like the texture of this remote. On the yeah. back, it's got a nice feel to it. Yep. It's a nice balance. My parents have a Roku, so. Broken. One minor criticism, there is no input button on this remote. I like the input button to switch back and forth between devices, but uh, it's an extra couple of steps to change inputs. Mm -hmm. I liked that this TV out of the box, the menu wasn't overwhelming with a whole bunch of different options. It was it was pretty minimalistic. It's responsive. Yep. Fast. Yep. You just go, okay, I want to watch a movie, and then it's like, all right, my apps, and then you could just see the apps. It's kind of like one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Unlike these other TVs, like Dave was saying. And then my complaint, of course, was there was a giant ad on the right-hand side. And if you were on the main menu, there's a little ad in the bottom. So you can't get away from an ad on this TV, but still good. In terms of the Dolby sound test again, another TV, good good sound, not gonna blow you away. I Yeah, not gonna blow you away, but I actually liked this one the best because I felt like this TV actually has bass. Hmm. It was the most immersive for me in terms of the bass, maybe not the clearest though, when we're talking about comparing it to other TVs, but if you want bass, this is the best option of the seven under a thousand. And it's probably because, I mean, it's bigger. The the yeah. actual depth of the bottom of the TV, they could probably fit more bigger speakers in it. Absolutely. In terms of the Dolby black and white test, the blacks were pretty good. Right, I could see just a little bit of blue, I thought, but the blacks, very good, as David just said. I thought the colors were nice and vibrant. Mm -hmm. I was pretty pleasantly surprised by this TV, especially for a budget brand. Movie test, blacks again, really good. I thought this was one of the best. Yeah, I thought they had kind of a greenish tint, but also very good. When we get to the brighter colors, the reds, this is one of them that looks a little orange to me. Hmm. Not the most vibrant, right. but still pretty good. Yeah, I also thought the colors had some pretty good contrast. When we got to the HDR black and white test, one of the things we noticed was some panel inconsistency. Yeah, this one was one of the most noticeable in terms of it just not being the same across. Most of the time though, when you're watching TV or a movie, you're not gonna notice it because mm -hmm. it isn't just a plain white screen where right. you can start to see those shadows. But, yeah. Yeah, also it was interesting how the, the whites got really, really cool as you got smaller and smaller into that circle. Mm. You mean the temperature of the color? Temperature of the color, yep, yeah. Exactly. The Vizio NQA. One thing right out of the box that I really liked about this TV was you had two different leg heights to accommodate a sound bar. I thought that was pretty cool and I don't think anyone else was doing that. Right, I think the other ones were probably just tall enough to accommodate Yeah, just tall enough. This, but this box. one can get really low to the ground for yep. sure. Pretty thin, but that bezel at the bottom we have a big. big Vizio logo, a lot yeah. bigger. It's more than twice the size of the Sony logo on the Sony TV and not the brand you want to brag about. Yeah. Also relatively light, easy to, yeah. easy to carry around. Yeah, relatively light. So this is one of my least favorite remotes because the way that it's designed, there's like this little gap in between the, the front and the back. And when you start pressing, it makes you feel like you haven't attached the back piece on correctly. Yeah. And I had to double check. I'm like, did I screw something up here? But I hadn't. It's just that when you press, it just it has a little bit of give. I think it's an awful remote and I think the buttons are in the wrong places. They put all this crap at the top, yep. but the volume button is what you need to have in the right place. Every other remote, pretty much, the buttons are intuitive, but this yeah. one, you, you're, ugh, it's awful. Yeah, also these, like the Peacock, Netflix, these buttons are really small. They're kind of hard to press. You can easily yeah. press two at the same time. And, and why do I want a Peacock button or a Tubi button? I mean, I can deal, what's the orange one? Orange one is Crackle. Crackle, why do I want a Crackle button for? I mean, it has an input button. Okay, so there you that, go. There's, there's a plus. But the button's small, the power button's small. Doesn't this feel good in your hand. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of slippery in the back. It's like yeah. there's no none of that texture that makes it stick well. It's Yuck. just not a good remote. Nope. The TV menus, slow, they Awful. Were clunky. It was not like smooth. 720p. It was bad. It was like the processor wasn't strong enough to be able to handle a really sharp menu with mm. good animation. So they just used one from like 2007. And there were all these like Firmware versions on the bottom left. That was left. weird, yeah. And then the serial numbers in the bottom right, it looks like you were in developer mode. I was gonna say, it looks like it's, it's in a developer mode and you're seeing all these numbers, like, oh, what does that mean? And yeah, and then it's I, got this gray background. Yeah, I just- stone background, what the hell is I that? I mean, I've never seen those developer, uh, they're not developer options, I suppose, but I've never seen that on a TV before. Well, it's, it's like, is something wrong with my TV? Did it come out of the box in a developer mode and I have to turn something off? Why? Like, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. Like, why am I seeing the firmware version maybe? 
And then we did the firmware update, which took forever. Yep. That was annoying. The sound, I thought it was okay. Again, it's, it's just, it, you know, it's the, the speakers in some of these TVs just weren't very impressive, and this this falls into that category. All right, yeah, I thought this was the worst sound, maybe. Okay. I didn't think that there was any high-end or low-end, and the mid-range, to me, sounded kind of telephony. It just mm. was not not very good at all. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was that bad, but I didn't think it, it was, was, yeah. It was, it was. Yeah, there you the, go. For the Dolby tests, the blacks were, were okay, and not much else was. Yep, I thought the whites were kind of blown out, and I kept stopping our test, and... Something stood out to me that didn't stand out to David. Everything that we watched on this TV looked low frame rate mm. to me. It was super jittery. It was like the processor couldn't keep up with the smoothness of the 60 frames per second video that we were watching. Mm. And that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah, I didn't really notice that, but I just, overall, I didn't, I wasn't impressed by the picture quality anyway. So I yeah, it was off. The colors were, were fine, but they just weren't nearly as vibrant as, as any right. of their TVs we tested. They was, everything was dull and it was flat. The blacks were okay and the whites were not great. And it was just, everything was not good. As soon as I walked up to this TV too, and we turned it on, I could just see all the pixels like in a grid mm -hmm. more than I could see them on other TVs. It just really not, a good looking panel at all. For the movie test, just the reds had the orange just hint. It looked grainy. The, yep. the blacks weren't black. It's just all the same problems from the, the Dolby test. As soon as the blacks, you introduce any color, it looked like it was in underwater mode to me because mm. the blacks turned a little blue green, a little teal. Sure. If you like to watch TV through algae, this might be you're a, good a one for If you're you. a sea turtle, this might, yeah. be, this might be for you. Yeah. For the HDR black and white test, there were issues with the viewing angle. Sometimes, like it would get brown on the screen. <laughs> it just—I it well, mean, color temperature issues oh, to the man. max, and the corners would get really dark. Yeah. But then it was also super inconsistent across the screen as soon as we introduced the motion, and the motion was jittery. But other than that, it was just—it was not good. Other than that, it was. It other was, than all the problems with the color and the sound, it's, the uh, TV. The TV has adjustable legs. Adjustable legs. <laughs> yeah. Our top three TVs coming in at number three: the Sony X85J. I thought this would have been a really great TV in 2017, and the reason I say that is that it uses LCD technology and it uses it well, unlike the Amazon Fire TV, yeah. which uses LCD technology. Not well. This is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, for me, this TV, number three, uh, I like the style of it. Thin, yep. good for wall mounting, has the HDMI 2.1 for your next-gen gaming consoles. It just, the, the blacks fell a little bit short of our top two TVs, and... Yeah, it, just, it could it just not fell, compete. Yeah, it just fell a little bit short right. on color. Some color gradient issues. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the UI is, is still, for me, the best overall. I wish I could take this UI and, and put it... In. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I suppose you could do that with a Sony QLED or OLED TV. So. Yeah, the, this is part of the disappointment for me with this one too, is just that Sony's technology is so far ahead of this mm. TV right now with the OLED technology that they're building. It's like, what are you still doing? They're, they're doing this to sell lower end TVs. Give us an OLED TV under $1,000. Come on. Come on. We both had the same TVs in one and two, just in a different order. So my second best overall was the TCL with a pretty big caveat here that if you're a Roku person, this is your number one TV because the Roku smart integration is just is so solid. And that's why I think that this is my number one TV is that the user interface on a TV is very important mm -hmm. and this one is easy to use. Yep. The other number one. The LG. The LG is really clunky to it's use. Bad. And for anybody that doesn't want to have to learn a brand new interface and struggle with it, I mm -hmm. think that the TCL is the way to go. I also think it had probably the best bassy sound overall, but definitely not the most consistent panel we saw. Yeah, for me, the LG, I do everything through my PlayStation, so I wouldn't be using that UI at all. Exactly. If you're somebody who's gonna be using that UI a lot, it's it's tough. Yeah. It's really tough, and I can understand why that alone would be such a deterrent, because if you're using that all the time, it's just, it's a headache. Right, but if you have an Apple TV separately, like I do, and yeah. you're gonna use the Apple TV all the time, or if you're just a cable box person, mm -hmm. and you're just gonna use that all the time and you don't have to worry about the UI, like David said. It's a solid choice. Also, if you're a next gen gamer, you're gonna wanna get the LG, not yes. the TCL. The TCL doesn't support the HDMI 2.1. So your PS5, your Xbox Series X, they'll still work, you just won't get the highest quality, which is kind of the point of getting those next gen gaming consoles to really just get the over the top ridiculous quality, which the LG can provide, the TCL cannot. In some respects, right. But still, 
The Sony, for instance, can provide the technical over yeah. the top quality, but it's not going to look good. Not going to look as good. Not going to look as good yeah. as these TVs. So I don't care what the Hertz is, HDMI 2.1, although it is important, especially if you're getting a more expensive TV than $1,000. And part of the reason why I'm putting the TCL number one is because it's $200. It's just cheaper, yeah. If you're looking to save some money, TCL. Yep, TCL was a very big surprise to me that I liked this TV so much because mm -hmm. TCL to me, I always had assumptions about the brand, lower quality. Yeah. Put them in the same category as Hisense or... Well, sometimes people do that. They say, oh, this is a discount TV brand. It's going to be discount quality. But with the TCL, that wasn't really the case in our... Yep. And with the Vizio, it was. Well, we saw too. Well, I, I always want to point out that we made a community post on YouTube. You can check that out on our channel. Somebody said, you know, you can review any TVs you want, but the LG is going to win. And uh, sure enough, that was my number one. So really good. Good prediction, that guy. Yeah, or, yeah. Okay. Man. All right. Person. We did our top three. Now we're going to do our bottom four because we had seven TVs. Kind of clunky. Get over it. Samsung, number four. Disappointing. It was, I, I, when we took it out of the box, I'm like, I think this is going to be the winner. And then we plug it in and it just, it fell flat for yeah. me in so many different ways. Very quickly became obvious that it was not going to be the winner. Yep. Narrow viewing angle. Yeah. Problems with that. QLED technology, but not nearly as good yep. as our number one or I will two. say favorite remote though. That right. was cool. Great remote. Stylish. Also, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good interface. Not great. I don't think it's yeah, I mean, as bad as some of the other ones. It's just, it's middle of the pack. It wasn't, you know, so bad that we had to put it in our bottom three. It just wasn't good enough to make the top three. Right. I don't know. Middle yeah. of the pack. Mm -hmm. Number five for me was the Amazon Fire TV Omni Series. I put this above the Hisense TV pretty much just because it's cheaper. And I thought, but I had the same okay. score for both of them. So I was like, all right, well, I'll just get the Amazon. Yeah. This is where we differed. We both have them in two and three just flipped. That's it. Yes. Yes. So Amazon Fire TV, again, you know, it just, it wasn't impressive. It was really light. I just think the blacks are so bad on this TV. Mm -hmm. They're blue. There's nothing black about the black colors on this TV. It's like bad LCD technology. You also went through a setup process that I wasn't a part of. So that, that, might, was the other that thing. might be uh, some additional friction for you. Indeed, additional friction. But you know, if you want to put the high sense as your third worst, I, you know, I respect that because yep. it also was not a good TV. Yeah, I thought this was just a bad TV. Yep. The bright colors were okay, but the gradients were terrible, and the yep. audio for me was the worst overall, and I could not get over that. We had the issue setting up the HDR, the menu was zippy, but clunky. Yeah, not a good TV. It just, it really wasn't good, but it was still better than by by <laughs> far the worst. I mean, usually when we do product reviews, there's, there's a cluster of, like, really bad ones, and, yep. and this one is just the standout worst by, yeah. by a not insignificant margin. Yes. The Vizio. I gave this TV a 0.5. Yeah. Uh -huh. Really, the best thing I can say about this TV is the adjustable legs. I keep coming back <laughs> to that point. I'm like, what's, what redeeming qualities can I pull away from this TV? It's right. the adjustable legs. They're cool. Right. And the blacks are okay. Yeah. Awful interface. Awful. Jittery, flickering. Everything looks like it's playing at 24 frames per second, even if it's not. It looked to me just awful. It was a deal breaker. Blacks started me. turning brown and looked yep. grainy. It's just, ugh. Man. Yeah, it's like a processor cannot keep up with this TV, which is bad to begin with. Avoid this TV like the remote. Plague. As we said earlier, two people in our members only Discord are going to win our top two TVs. Click that join button down LG below. LG TV, the TCL, which is the surprising yep. second place. We're giving away $1,600 to like, whoa. Click that join button below to learn more. And if that's not your style, you don't want to join. Just give this video a thumbs up. Help yeah. us reach more people with this video. We'd really appreciate yes. it.